Okay, this is a follow-up video uh, on this board here I had previously mentioned in another video. It was designed as a, a way to um, put a shield on a Pro Mini Arduino and quickly and efficiently uh, flash bootloaders. Ended up being a full Arduino in itself, um, minus the RX and TX pin headers. Uh, remember that if you're using one of these in Arduino mode, like on a breadboard or something. Um, also, of course, the program Digital 10 Jumper up here um, must be jumpered when flashing the bootloader. Recommend unjumpering at all other times. It can cause issues when flashing um, sketches, especially if it's still mounted to the um, Pro Mini which some people do, including myself. Um, the Pro Minis that you get usually come with straight pin headers. Uh, this is fine for hooking up to the board. Uh, and of course, you can do it different ways. But I usually set mine up this way so they'll uh, drop right into a breadboard. And you can... If you have nothing else, you can use that and just stack it right on the top. Of course, you have to remove it every time you change out the uh, Atmega 328 chip. Um, I actually got some of these stackable headers, a couple of them, and did a Pro Mini a little differently so I can have more options with it. And I actually am able to stack it underneath my bootloader board. And I can pretty much leave these together all the time. That way I know this Pro Mini has been flashed with uh, Mr. Gammon's uh, bootloader sketch, which is on the screen here behind me. Uh, www.gammon.com.au slash bootloader. You can get his sketch if you don't already have it. I have flashed this uh, Pro Mini with it already. Um, for those that will be getting uh, these boards, I will also be including one of these uh, little adapter boards here because I really do not like using jumper wires on my FTDIs. It's almost always temporary and the whole unplugging plugging process I just rather keep it simple so I'll be including one of those I'm also uh, been putting a few up on eBay to see if anybody's interested in them but I have that plugged into my FTDI chip and the main purpose of this video is to just walk through um, the basic bootloading procedure and then the sketch loading procedure if you want to go straight into that and what can happen if you don't jumper things properly okay so first I'm going to load in a virgin and make a chip Since I will be bootloading, I need to jumper this. Otherwise, the serial monitor for Gammon Sketch will not see the chip. So, programming mode is jumpered. And we are connected. Now, if you have not used a sketch before, it doesn't matter which board you are selected on, I found out. You're not actually programming the board at this point, if the board's already been programmed with the sketch. You are just reading from the serial monitor. Um, the boards I've been sending out already programmed, the Pro Minis, will be set at the default 115200. If you wish to change that, you can get the sketch 
and go down to the uh, baud rate setting here and change the accordion and reflash. But for now, I'm going to go into the serial monitor and there it sees the uh, 328. And at the bottom here, we are selected on 15200. Otherwise, I would have got garbage. So I'm going to go ahead and press U to flash the Uno 16 megahertz bootloader. G to go ahead and program. And it committed pages, no errors found, setting fuses, calibration. I can go ahead and replace the chip and do another. Or I'm done with this. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and flash a sketch to this chip. Uh, just a modified version of the Blink sketch that cycles through my LEDs, testing them out. So I'm going to switch the FTDI interface from the Pro Mini to the board with the Atmega chip in it. And I'm going to remove this jumper. If I don't, I'll get out of sync errors and whatnot. It will not respond. Don't need the serial monitor. Let's get back to my blink sketch and upload. And there we have it cycling. It's that simple, really. Um, like I said, and right now the uh, Pro Mini is still attached to the board. Um, so you got to make sure you pay attention to the jumpers and whatnot. I'm going to show you what happens with this jumper if it's left on. And I see the board has frozen. It's like it's tied reset uh, mixing in with the Pro Mini or something is locked up. And if I try flashing, it's never going to actually go through the transmit receive process. It's just kind of hung up there. So I can either do one of two things, and I usually just remove the jumper. I can do that, or if I want to leave the jumper on, just detach the Pro Mini. It's the combination of the jumper still being attached to the Pro Mini that interferes with the sketch flashing process. And there it flashes okay with the jumper on but no Pro Mini attached. Now, when I send out these uh, boards, let me know if you want a couple of these uh, stackable headers and I will include that. Thank you for watching.